Great. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's get going. Uh, so it's fantastic for us to uh, catch up with you again, Kyle Martino, and you're back doing commentary now for Warner Media's package of uh, US, U.S. men's national team matches, which is an eight-year deal. Uh, started uh, this past week. Uh, it, obviously, U.S. women's national team is uh, part of that as well. And uh, uh, matches on HBO Max and on TNT. So uh, you've been out of the commentary thing for a few years now since, since you left NBC's uh, Premier League coverage in, in 2020. Uh, what's it like jumping back into this? And um, what was it like being out of the game in, in a commentary sense, in a, in a television sense for the last two and a half seasons? Um. I, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it was wonderful being out of, of the game for a little while. And uh, <laughs> uh, mostly because, uh, and, it, and it's one of the big reasons that I uh, decided to take a break from TV for so long. I just got to immerse myself in, in projects that were born out of my run for U.S. Soccer President back when I uh, you know, made that crazy decision to leave NBC and, and potentially not go back if I was able to uh, win that election. So... Um, you know, so so incredibly grateful for and enjoyed my time at NBC. It's my my forever family, and I I now sit on on the couch on the weekends with my kids and and, uh, and with my real family, celebrate them and watch the incredible work they continue to do. But um, yeah, I've just been been lost and and poured my my entire focus and bandwidth into. I guess you could say my, my instruments of, of cultural cultural growth in the game of, of soccer. And uh, I, I am much I'm much more a fan over the past two years than, than any expert or any any opinion that uh, someone was going to listen to. So we'll get to Warner Media and TNT and, and, and U.S. national team in a minute. Uh, but since you mentioned it, perfect segue. Uh, you've been doing street soccer the last few years uh, here in the U.S. with Dennis Crowley uh, of Kingston. Uh, FC, uh, Stockade FC in Kingston, New York, and others. Uh, really exciting grassroots thing that we have too little of, I think, in the United States. So, so uh, tell us about that. Yeah, the, the issue of consequence when I left the presidential election that was on my mind, it was kind of the, the Jerry Maguire bad slice of pizza. I, I just couldn't sleep and struggled to go back to my job at NBC and, and be fully committed and focused on that because um, I saw a very big problem in terms of too many kids and adults for that matter, str struggling to find the beautiful game, to play the beautiful game. It's the most inclusive sport on the planet. So I, I just, at a, at a molecular level was against this idea. It's become a privilege and not a right of everyone. So um, the cool part of the, the, you know, the journey to being an entrepreneur was I realized the intersection of social enterprise, you know, it's, it's a, um, it's a low cost, high impact um, solution I've come up with to bring the game to everyone. The cool part is that that social enterprise, that, that philanthropy dovetails so nicely with developing great soccer players. So, you know, I, I, I got to solve two problems at the same time with what I've been building. One is I want to see our men win a World Cup while I'm alive, and I want to see our women continue to win World Cups. And street soccer is the the greatest asset we are not using in order to ensure those things. So uh, Dennis Crowley, uh, who started Foursquare, believed in my vision for the largest football club on the planet by taking some of the tricks he used to make cities easier to use. Uh, my, my, my lifetime in soccer and being the pickup punk my whole, whole life and a unique I idea for how we could bring pickup soccer back to communities in a big way led to the creation of Street FC. Um, and that also led to my desire to find an infrastructure solution. So in a spontaneous way, kids could find soccer. You know, stole an idea from all over the world where every basketball court has a soccer goal under the hoop. And over under was born. Couldn't find a, a soccer goal that any Parks and Rec group would allow under a hoop, so designed and <laughs> patented one that turned that turned into golfer. And then the latest uh, venture is, um, you know, I, I I miss the club and I miss the clubhouse, and so just ha had a had a vision for a a you know a Soho house of soccer, a place you you could go and belong to a club, and um, you know. Brought Football Cafe, which is an incredible brand of New York City by Diego Muscassoni, the, uh, the the man behind Fly Nowhere and Nowhere FC, 
and this this uh, this World Cup with the men this summer stood up a uh, you know a, a activation that's going to turn into a a cultural experience behind the uh, the game of soccer in New York City. Fantastic. So, and so yeah, so that, that that's 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 why I have gray hair, and that's why I haven't been on TV in a, in a while. <laughs> and that 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 will gr further gray your hair. Maybe something that that <laughs> further grays your hair is uh is is uh commentary and uh and kind of the grind. And now you're back into it. So um, tell us about this opportunity now. Uh, uh, what 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 convinced you to get back into the game, so to speak, in in terms of media and commentary with the uh, with Warner Discovery, I keep saying Warner Media. That's the previous name. Warner Discovery uh, and TNT uh, and HBO Max. Yeah, I'm, there, there were a few opportunities when I left NBC to go back on TV, and um, you know, uh, uh, the the time commitment was one reason I, I didn't I didn't go back. You know, I I, um, I I just have been a weekend warrior my whole life, and it was time to to commit weekends to the the big soccer games that are in my life now which are under eight uh, girls soccer games and my daughter marlo is you know the, the manchester derby is nothing to uh <laughs> what, what it feels like what it feels like for me on a weekend to be at a big match with marlo martino playing in it um and so uh, you know I, I i took my uh attention off of, of potentially going back into tv until this opportunity came up and Obviously, the TNT basketball show is is one of the greatest you know, sports broadcast products on the planet. An incredible team, remarkably entertaining, just so high level. And everyone's been trying to uh, emulate that and reproduce it most unsuccessfully. So, you know, the pedigree and the heritage of the, the team behind the scenes at TNT that put together that show, being a part of, you know, this this. Um, foray into, into soccer was was very exciting to work with such an incredible production group and then uh, you know julie fowdy who i who i hold in such high regard as uh, a former player and a and a talent and a voice for soccer and demarcus beasley being my, my former roommate with the men's national team and starting his television career it not only um you know, was it a great production team and a really exciting on-camera team that I, I i really was looking forward to uh, to joining and then the national team means a lot to me. You know, it's 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 the the you know if if you have a choice, the team I care the most about, and um, that 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 was the last piece that helped me see this is this is a great reason to uh, to get back on TV. And you know, it, it's it's hard after you've been with a team like NBC. You know, the, the um, Lee and and Graham and Arlo and Rebecca and the Robbies. Uh, it, it's just you know, it's it's. It, it is um, it is a family. It is a team that I'll always think about. How incredible it was that we did what we did uh, in the in the eight years I was there. So you know, hard hard to hard to feel you can find that sort of team again. But uh, it, it's a testament to what TNT and um, Warner Discovery have put together. That you know, I, I'm I'm very excited and and not anxious whatsoever about being able to recreate those moments with the team that I've joined. So the uh, big question in terms of just your preparation and your, uh, your comfort level uh, that I have is um, NBC, it's a weekly thing, right? It's a, the Premier League is a grind, right? 38, 38 match days. Uh, you're in the studio for the majority of those. Uh, week in, week out, you're watching games in the middle of the week, right? Also to prepare uh, for, for the next week. And just, just the NBC Fan Fest in Orlando was just last week. So I was there and... Um, was talking to some of your former colleagues, and it, that's that's the grind. That's the uh, that's the job. Now you're doing a national team job where you'll be calling a game once every well, maybe uh, two matches in a window, but two matches one, every three months. Um, so how do you stay fresh? How do you stay sharp? And and, and uh, is that a, a particular challenge that maybe you didn't face at NBC that you're going to face here? Um, you know, the challenge is in not, not having a lot of reps, you know, in any scenario, N not, not being with your team regularly, you know, it's the same challenge that national teams have, right? National team comes in and has to gel very quickly. So you can see the parallels there. Um, but you know, with, with the, the talent we have and the experience we have on our team, you know, Shaw Brown and some of the producers that have been doing more world cups and more national team games than any other producers. You know, we, we, we will hit the ground running on every uh, on every broadcast. 
uh, you know, it'll take time to to gel and find that chemistry and find that uh, that that um, you know shorthand that takes a lot of years to 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 establish. But you know, for me, uh, I think it's the freshness will come from you know b- being away and you know sometimes on NBC you're working so much you feel like oh man I just said this yesterday you know it's it's <laughs> uh you know you, you sometimes you're like I- I'm getting sick of my own voice um and so you know it's I- I'm not worried about the challenge and that it, it really is perfect in my life right now because it does allow me to to be the off-camera person that I want to be in order to move the game forward in this country and the NBC job you know as much as I loved it there, there was an increasing commitment that just became impossible to marry with all the other things off of camera I wanted to be doing. So with that in mind, uh, obviously Warner discovery has given you a streaming platform. Uh, uh, NBC launched their streaming platform as you were, you were leaving uh, Peacock. So you didn't really get to take advantage of that, but now you're on HBO max and already noticed uh, the, the first few matches, women's national team and men's national team that were on HBO Max. There's more, I don't want to say necessarily freedom, but more, you, you can go more long form. You can elaborate on your thoughts a little more. You can talk a little more. And, and uh, you and, and Julie and Demarcus and Shannon have taken advantage of that. And, and they've given us some great analysis that we don't necessarily get on linear television all the time. So uh, talk a little bit about that, because that's different, right? That's different than being on NBC or being on TNT, being uh, on HBO Max and having um, all the time in the world, basically, without commercials. Yeah, um, I, I can see the, you know Pierre Moussa and Adam Littlefield's faces as I get ready to say this comment. The incredible producers that have been such a big part of the NBC success. Uh, you know, Kyle Rapp, Kyle Rapp, Kyle Rapp, you know, <laughs> th- th- ten, ten, 10 seconds, five seconds, five seconds, Kyle Rapp, Rapp, Rapp. Um, yeah, it's 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 weird to not have that uh, being yelled in, in, in my ear um, uh, constantly. And and I think, you know, the, the, the downside to the incredible success of NBC is uh, and, and the challenge of covering so much in a window is there's very little, you know, there's very little time to to elaborate. There's very little time to go deeper. And I think NBC does an incredible job of of turning thirty seconds into thir- you know three minutes. Um, but it is it is a, a wonderful and unusual feeling, you know, having a twelve year career in TV to uh, you know to be wondering like, are we really still going to be able to talk about this? This is this is kind of wild. So uh, I think there are challenges to having you know a lot of time. And making sure that that you make it in, you know important and thoughtful, and uh, the the real challenge is going to be bouncing back and forth from HBO Max, where we don't have commercial breaks and we have that time, to TNT that falls a falls a, a normal structure. But again, you know, when you're TV talent, you, you basically put your hands in in or you put you know you put your comfort and your TV life in the hands of these incredible producers, and and you know we have some of the best in sport. What uh, is working with Luke Wildman like? Because he's a uh, he's a pro, right? And he's uh, called this game from many different angles, different places, different markets, right? Uh, England, Canada, the United States. Uh, so that that's uh, that that that's something really uh, uh, different in terms of what necessarily we've had in terms of commentators for U.S. men's and women's national team before. I mean, he's got. Uh, maybe more global perspectives than most of the commentators we've had in the past. So uh, talk about working with him, because I, I think that's a really cool addition to uh, the U.S. soccer family, if you will. Yeah, well, I'll start with I really like him. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter you know, what you what you do, what teams you're calling or who you're doing it with. If, if you don't enjoy being next to the person, it's very difficult for that to last. And it's very difficult for. Uh, chemistry and enjoyment to come across on, on the broadcast. He, he's a wonderful guy. I've known him for a while, but I've known him, you know, from my MLS days as as you know the guy in the booth next to Arlo and I that we'd knock on the glass and and, and wave that every now and then. Um, y- you won't find anyone in the industry that has a bad word to say about him. Just just a wonderful person, and um, you know he, he he makes it easy to get back in the booth. You know something I haven't uh, done a lot over the years. And um, it's it's also nice to have an outside perspective, you know, someone that that is looking at the national team from from a different lens, and you know, uh, you know, challenging me to um, you know to to have to have a a more uh, 
you know, ha have a more thoughtful and um, analytical assessment of a team that you know, people watching might not be seeing as regularly as, as we are. And so it's already, I'm telling it's a, it's a, it's a partnership I'm going to enjoy being a part of for sure. Fantastic. Uh, last question for you. Uh, we talked about uh, the, the, the difference between calling national team uh, football, soccer and uh, club and uh, the, the every week versus the every three months or two months or whatever it is. Any interest in uh, doing commentary again for, for, for club soccer, whether it's uh, MLS or the Premier League or Bundesliga or something else, USL maybe, anything else? Yeah, I mean, it, that, that interest is always there. You know, I, I think um, my, my life is never going to be uh, a, um, a exclusively on-air talent life. And so it's just about finding ways to marry a television career that interests me with a desire to to grow the sport in the country in ways that have nothing to do with being on television. And so, you know, I'll, I'll always keep keep my my ears open and my mind open to opportunities. But for right now, you know, my my focus is, you know, when you're a professional athlete, you're 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 hardwired in a way that makes you difficult to. <laughs> to be around sometimes and trying to be the absolute best you, you can at something. And so my focus now is to jo join this incredible team at, uh, at, at TNT and, uh, and, and make our team one of the best on television. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good to see you.